Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name, which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This video is the first in a playlist on regression. The playlist includes two videos on correlation because correlation is a prerequisite for regression. There will be five videos on regression itself, and after that, one video on residuals, which is part of the post-regression analysis. And finally, there will be a very useful video which compares and contrasts ANOVA with regression. That will help you understand both concepts better. And eventually, I plan to do a three-video playlist on design of experiments, which is a discipline used to validate or invalidate regression models. See statistics from a to z.com slash videos for the latest status of my videos completed and planned. As usual in the book and in these videos, we will go quickly through a list of keys to understanding, or KTUs, to give you the overall picture on one page. And then we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. For this video, there are five KTUs. The first key to understanding tells us that correlation is observed when two variables either increase together or decrease together in a roughly linear pattern. The second key KTU says covariance is a statistic or a parameter which can tell us the direction of a correlation between two paired variables x and y using data consisting of xy pairs. The third key says covariance can be conceptually viewed as a two-dimensional variance of the xy data points about the point with their average values, that is the point x bar y bar. The fourth key says covariance cannot tell us the strength of the correlation. The fifth and final key to understanding says, when normalized or standardized, the covariance becomes the correlation coefficient, which is a very useful measure of the direction and strength of the correlation. And here, on one page, are the five keys to understanding the concept of correlation, part one, covariance. You may wish to pause the video at this point and read them all together. Okay, let's begin our detailed look into each key. The first key to understanding tells us that correlation is observed when two variables either increase together or decrease together in a roughly linear pattern. Correlation is negative when larger values for one variable are paired with smaller numbers of the other. Positive correlation is the opposite. The values of both variables grow together. In the graph on the left, a low value for the x variable, which is outside temperature, corresponds to a higher value of the y variable, heating costs. When the outside temperature is low, that is colder, heating costs are higher. As the outside temperature increases, the heating costs go down. This is negative correlation. In the middle graph, the temperature can go up or down, but there is no correlation with the stock index or vice versa. And in the graph on the right, we see positive correlation. When the temperature goes up, plant growth also goes up. The second key says that covariance is a statistic or a parameter which can tell us the direction of a correlation between two paired variables, x and y, from the data consisting of xy pairs. In correlation, we usually deal with a sample of xy pairs. Each data point consists of a value for x and a corresponding value for y. For example, x might be a person's height and y might be that same person's weight. A statistic is a measurable property of a sample. Parameter is the term used for a measurable property of a population or process. Covariance 
like the mean or standard deviation, can be either a statistic or a parameter. Calculating covariance is a first step in calculating correlation. It is important to note that correlation does not attempt to demonstrate cause and effect. That is the purpose of regression analysis, which can be considered to be an extension of correlation analysis. So although we use the terms x and y for the paired variables, the existence of correlation does not mean that y is a function of x. Key to understanding number three. Covariance can be conceptually understood as a two-dimensional variance of the xy data points about the point with their means, that is about the point x bar y bar. For a single variable x, variance is a measure of variation of the values of x in the data about the mean value of x. In these formulas, x bar or y bar are the symbols for the means of a sample, and the Greek letter mu is the symbol for the mean of a population or process. So we can think of covariance as a two variable counterpart to the variance. Covariance is a measure of variation with two variable data points, that is, xy data. The variation is calculated from the point made up of the mean of x and the mean of y, that is, the point x bar comma y bar. And here are the formulas for the covariance. At the top of the page is the formula for the covariance of a sample of data. Let's go through this step by step with a fictional example using 10 pairs of XY data. In the United States, we measured the height in inches and the weight in pounds for 10 individual people. This gave us 10 pairs of XY data as shown in columns two and three. Next, we calculated the individual components in the formula. First, in the fourth column, we subtract each value from the mean of all the x's. Next, we do the same for the y values in the fifth column. Next, we multiply each pair of numbers in columns four and five to get their product, which is the sixth and last column. To the right and below the 10 rows of calculations, we total up the sum of the 10 products and we get 1,127. Finally, in the bottom row, we divide that sum by n minus 1 equals 9, and we get our answer. The covariance is 125.2 inch pounds. Now you may be wondering, what is an inch pound? That's a good question for which there is no good answer. And this is one reason why the covariance is of limited usefulness. Now, let's say that after being measured and weighed as we described above, each of the 10 subjects walked across the hall and were weighed and measured again, this time by some researchers visiting from Europe. This, show, this table shows the data that the European researchers recorded. It also shows the value they calculated, 1.4 meter kilograms. You can see the difficulty with using covariance. Not only do we have meaningless units, we have widely varying values, 125.2 and 1.4 for the same data subjects. One thing we can say from both sets of measurements above is that there is a positive correlation. That is, as height increases, weight also increases, or as weight increases, height increases also. So we can use the sign of these numbers, which is positive, to tell us the direction of the correlation, positive. But how good is this correlation? How strong is it? We can't use the values of the numbers because the units are meaningless, and we would have to make an arbitrary choice between whether the strength was 125.2 or 1.4. So although covariance can tell us the direction of the correlation, our KTU number four says covariance cannot tell us the strength of the correlation. It is easy to see that we need a better measure of correlation. KTU number five. When normalized or standardized, the covariance becomes the correlation coefficient, 
which is a very useful measure of the direction and strength of the correlation. That is the subject of the next article, Correlation Part 2, the Correlation Coefficient. Okay, that concludes our clarification of Part 1 of the concept of correlation. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me that more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromaz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromaz.com slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip of the week series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at Stats A to Z.